these are machines. Uh, they're not, you know, they're, yeah, they're shelters, they're homes, they're houses, whatever you want to call them in, in terms of that, but they're machines and they're, the look of them and the structure of them and everything about them is uh, a result of what it takes to encounter the natural phenomena on the planet that are going to provide what you need. It's much like the human body. Uh, the, the human body is a circulatory system, a, a nervous system, a digestive system, uh, a respiratory system. All of these systems are in the human body. You can't just uh, apply these systems to the human body. The look of the human body is really a result of these systems. Uh, and these buildings are pretty much that way. But I'd been living with solar and wind electricity. I knew how to use it. I knew the idiosyncrasies of it. All these high-powered people that I flew into Colorado for Dennis Weaver's house had not lived with it. They knew the formulas and they knew how to design it, but they lived in homes that were on the grid. Their office was on the grid. I was living with it and I found out that, in fact, in practicality and pragmatic uh, experience, I knew more than they did. So I blew them all off after Weaver's house and started doing our own system and nobody wanted to do it this way. They called me an idiot. You are not vulnerable to one piece of equipment going bad. Your house will still function. And so that's the rationale for it. It makes good sense. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. First of all, the botanical cell, as you can see, is, is full of gravel for two and a half feet. Then there's a little layer of sand or straw or both. The purpose of that is to keep the dirt from falling down into the gravel because the gravel, the voids in the gravel create a, a body of water that the plants, it's like hydroponics almost, that the plants always have access to a thousand gallons of water. The dirt is just to structure the plants because they're getting their nutrients from the gray water. There is a trend toward banks and insurance companies actually starting to favor carbon zero green buildings. They see that this building is not going to be a white elephant needing a ton of fuel in the future, then it's a better risk to loan on and to uh, insure. So I'm like, you know, I'm standing here and uh, here's a big plateau and uh, there's a peak here and another plateau and over here and there's a peak here. Well, my line of sight, see this is the ultimate peak right here. This is Nirvana or whatever you want to call it, the solution. I can't even see it. You know, uh, so I don't even know it's there. So I get here and I still can't see it. And, and maybe I have to do some weird stuff to get here, you know, and some weirder stuff to get here and to get here. And finally, I just get so I can see it. But what I'm saying is I have to get however I can to a place where I can at least see where I want to go. And that's, that's a big issue with the whole situation right now. People are stymied down here because they can't even see where they're going. And all I'm saying is just get me higher, get me higher. And I'll, then I'll be able to see what's beyond and who knows, when I get here, maybe I can see something else. But uh, it's a whole, it's a, an approach to everything really that uh, filters back down to whether to use a windmill or solar panels and what kind of a climate. With, it's gonna be you know, a huge Amazon jungle greenhouse to produce food. Cause we've, we're seeing that that we can survive. You know, 25 people can survive here. We don't need power, we don't need water, we don't need sewage uh, lines, uh, we don't need grocery stores. We can live, and that is freedom. So, uh, all right, we'll take a break and do uh, power.